Good morning, everyone in my class. Um, I want to go over a few things today via video since we are social distancing and doing online learning, my favorite thing right now. Um, and um, I want to go over uh, these terms and then kind of do a visual of some of these terms. Um, so the first thing we're going to talk about is contagions. Um, and that's anything that you can catch from someone else. Um, and you'll learn more about that in AP Bio if you take AP Bio. But basically it's the flu or common cold where you're catching it from someone else, uh, direct contact. So um, history has shown us, um, if you think back to your history class, um, the Great Plague, the Bubonic Plague, um, if you think about where that started um, and where it was most um, impacted, it was in urban areas uh, because people were closely packed um, and they were uh, contracting it from person to person. Um, it only started to move out into the rural areas when the merchants, you know, got infected and then moved out into the, uh, into the rural areas or people fled from the cities. And eventually it, it kind of went out into the rural areas. So that's a great example of density de dependent factors on populations uh, where you have lots of organisms together and the contagion in this case, which was the bubonic plague, um, just kind of takes advantage of organisms being on top of each other, in this case, organisms or humans. Um, and you see that uh, the doubling time on a contagion then starts to kind of go out of control. Um, and doubling time, remember, is how fast um, a contagion will uh, double the number of infections. Um, and we end up with an exponential curve, or in math you would call that a J curve, which I have down here. This is your exponential curve. Um, and you here's, here's where you're doubling quite fast. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously um, there'll be some kind of tipping point, but we don't know at what point that will happen. So that's your exponential curve. Um, so, uh, and then the last one is the density independent factors, and those factors have to do nothing with how closely packed people are. Um, a lot of times those are uh, natural events like floods, uh, mudslides, wildfires, tornadoes. I always think of them as the equal opportunity um, destroyers. It doesn't matter whether you're rich or poor, you're gonna get a, a tornado comes it's gonna knock down each of those houses, whether it's a, a beautiful mansion or a single wide mobile home, uh, both will be uh, equally affected uh, and people will be equally affected. So those would be density independent factors. So today I wanna to zone in on density dependent factors and show you a little activity that we were gonna do in class that I'll show you today. Um, and I do want to put a caveat that this is not my work. Um, I did get it from um, a great, there's great teachers out there online sharing their stuff. And uh, I did pick this up from one of my uh, Facebook boards. And so for the teacher who did produce this, this is a great uh, example of density dependent factors. And I'm going to work in um, the flattening the curve and uh, social distancing with this. Okay, so. Let me come over here, I just saw my garbage, sorry. Um, okay, so we have 16 little uh, dominoes and they are sitting on a, um, I think these are 14 by 14 tile. And they're all kind of packed together. So representing some density. Um, and we have, we have our contagion, which is COVID-19. Here's our contagion, okay? So what's gonna happen when COVID-19 comes in and we end up, uh, COVID-19 ends up touching and knocking down 14 out of the 16. So is that like 85% of the, of the um, dominoes got knocked down, okay? So those, all the ones that got knocked down are now infected themselves. They may be in asymptomatic, which means without symptoms. But if each one of these dominoes now have been exposed to the contagion and they go out, so if this was a, con a person who was uh, um, 
who was infected, un maybe unbeknownst, and flew on, a, on an airplane. Here are all the people who now are infected. This guy gets on a subway. These guys get on buses. Someone goes, a bunch of them go to church. Some go to school. You can see how each one of these dominoes, uh, if they become the ball, they can hit down 14 out of 16 more dominoes. And this is how the COVID-19 um, is spreading so easily um, with uh, communities and people because we are dense, we are social beings and we are densely packed. All right, so now what happens when we social distance? So let me show you my social distance example. Um, I gotta turn it this way so you can see them all. So here I have quadrupled our space. So now we're using four tiles, still 16 dominoes, four tiles. They are socially distanced. Um, so they're not dense, they're not density. They don't have high density now. And COVID-19 is gonna come in and try to hit them up. And not one gets hit. Now, you can say, well, we purposely try to make them not hit. So let's try to hit one, hit some. All right, so COVID-19 has now hit two out of 16. That's a huge difference. That's what, 2% maybe, um, versus 85%. So social distancing works. So those two that now are knocked down, if they go out, um, first of all, if they social distance, they're not going to infect anyone. But second of all, if they do go out and social distance, like if they socially isolate, uh, they won't infect anybody. But if they socially distance, the odds of them actually infecting others is going to be really low. And so this is what we mean by how effective social distances, distancing is because COVID-19 and other contagions are, um, are uh, density dependent. So I wanna just come back to the final thing, which is this graph that you guys looked at yesterday. Oh, let me do it the other way. Yeah, that's, that's good. Um, you looked at this uh, today, I think, in our lesson. Um, <clears throat> so you hear a lot about flattening the curve. So here is the curve, a normal J curve. And you can see in the front section of it, here is your J, okay? And that's what will happen if we, don't, if we do density dependent and we don't social distance. This flattening the curve that we talk about is right here. And you can see there's a little bit of a J curve starting, but it flattens off because of social distancing, because of this example that I just showed you. And so less people get infected because there's less ability for the contagion to infect people. And so we run through this uh, faster and then the, and eventually the disease dies off because a majority of us get um, immunizations to it, natural immunizations, antibodies, which is going to take some time because this is a new disease and we have no antibodies for it. Um, and so our exposure is what's going to actually protect us in the long run. So social distancing works. Density dependent uh, contagions rely on our closeness so that they can spread. And if we separate ourselves, then the spreading doesn't happen. Lesson for today. Bye.